hand stitching the binding on the back of the quilt, you're going to need the thread you picked out. Remember, 40 weight is preferable, but 50 weight is fine too. And then you're going to need a pair of embroidery scissors or just your thread cutting scissors and a needle. And so as far as needle size, my favorite one to use um, is this one here. It's really thin and hard to see. It has a small head, but a it's a little longer. Um, this one is called a straw needle. It says size nine. And so um, if that helps to see what size I'm using, sometimes if my thread is thicker and I, it's just, you know, splitting, trying to get it through the eye there, um, I just will go up another needle size that has a bigger eye. But this one has worked really nice for me and um, I'm going to go ahead by trimming um, just about the length of your forearm. Um, so I've tried to make extra long pieces just so I don't have to keep threading the needle, but it makes knots and um, just can get all tangled. So this is fine here. Um, and then I also want to trim the original end because it can get kind of beat up when you're um, just having it stored. So I just like to trim at an angle just for a nice clean sharp point. It'll make it go through the eye of the needle more easily. And so I like to hold the eye of the needle over a white background or a light one. It makes it easier to see just stick that through. I didn't even need my glasses for that this time. <laughs> um, and so it's ready to go. So just like when we start the binding um, in the bottom right corner, I also like to just start sewing there as well. So I'm going to get this all situated and then I'll show you how to do these first invisible stitches. I don't tie any knots except at the very end, so I'll show you that process. All right, so to start off, I'm just going to embed the thread in this quarter inch seam allowance here instead of tying it off. So I'm just going to go in and out, in and out twice and pull it through, but not all the way through. I still want some of that fabric, the little tail there to be sticking out. And then I'm going to do that again, just in and out, in and out, so four times. And when the binding is sewn over this, it will be protected in there, so in the wash it's not going to come out. So let me just show an up close of that. So you can see I took some larger stitches, there's a bigger gap between, and then I have this little tail, this bright pink here, sticking out. So now I'm ready to do the first few stitches. So you can see I didn't send those initial varied stitches through everything, but just enough like into the batting to hold it in place there. So now we're going to fold the binding over just below the stitch line. And some people I know clip and go all the way across. I just kind of adjust it every few inches here. But I'm going to start where the thread is coming out. And just in the fold, take a little stitch, like maybe an eighth of an inch or so, and pull it through. And I want to pull gently because I don't want to pull those buried stitches out. They'll start to be secure in there after a few stitches. But once I come out, I'm going to go just where that uh, thread came out. I'm going to go underneath, right below the stitch line here, and do the same thing. Being careful not to go through the whole quilt, just through the backing, maybe the batting. And I'll come out again, again just being gentle, pulling it. 
and then I'm going to go in on the top where the thread came out and come out and underneath again just below the thread line where I came out up above I'm going to go in underneath in the backing and then you can start to pull it a little firmer and you'll see that it starts to hold the binding down. So I'm just going to keep doing that all the way across until I get to the corner and I'll show you how I do that. Alright, I want to talk about what to do when you run out of thread. Like I said, we're not doing any knots until the very end. So, I want enough just to be able to bury the stitches four times like we did in the beginning. And I like to always end with the needle coming out of, uh, I'm sorry, with the thread coming out of the backing of the quilt rather than in the binding. So I'm going to go in one more time in the backing of the quilt here and pull it through and I can pull it a little taut now um, the thread isn't gonna all shift and come out like in the very beginning and then I'm just going to bury those stitches I like to do two at a time here pull it through hold on to that little tail so it doesn't come out and then one two more. Again, I'm not going through. My finger is just giving some support here, but I'm just going through you know, the backing and the batting. And then I just leave it loose here. And when I do the next step, I'll just bury that thread in there. So I don't need to cut it. I don't need to tie it off. So you can see that that forearm's length of thread secured the binding. You know, not quite a foot here. It'd be more like a or nine inches so you can see I'm coming near the corner and I might make mine just a tad bit longer than my forearm just because I don't want to run out of thread in the corner so just kind of keep in mind where your corner is coming up when you are threading you might even start your binding you know just a little ways up from the corner so you know you'll make it around but it's just trickier when you're running out of thread and you need to do a corner so if that's the case and you're getting real close, you might just stop it early even if you have enough thread to go a little further. Um, just don't run out of thread on the corners. So when it's time to resume, I have a new piece of thread um, ready to go on the needle. So this time, this is kind of an awkward angle with the camera here, but I'm going to start about where I, where my buried stitches came out, I'm going to start there and work my way back to the last place my um, binding was attached. So I might use this little tail from the last thread and pull it tight just to make sure that the binding is down and I might do it again. But I'm just going to go in where I came out last time. And I'm just going to go the opposite direction, just bury those stitches a couple times. And again, I don't want to pull it all the way through, so leave a little tail. And then I'm going to just go in two more times. And I want to, oops, I want to end up back where my last binding stitches were. And it doesn't have to be exactly where, but in that vicinity, I'm just holding the tail down so as I pull it, I don't pull it too far. I might pull the first tail just to, again, make sure the binding is down. I'm just going to tuck all those under the binding, and then I'm just going to resume where I left off. So, um, here's a thread coming out here, and you could start from in the backing or in the binding. I think I'm going to just go in the 
back in here. So just take a little stitch, pull lightly because I don't want to pull everything through. Um, again, I can pull a little more firmly once I've gone a couple inches just to make sure that it's really in there. But I'll just keep going from the backing to the binding about an eighth of an inch at a time. And check from time to time that you haven't gone through um, to the top of the quilt. It's easier to just take out a few stitches when you notice it um, than it is to realize it happened a while ago. Um, just saves more time. I also keep my finger right underneath so I know if I feel the needle jab me I'm going too far when you come to a corner I like to stop the thread inside the backing of the quilt and make that final stitch just touch the next seam line here so I'm gonna just pull that through and then just set the needle side for a moment and I'm going to take my right thumb and hold the binding down just following the seam allowance line here and then I'm going to take my right or I'm sorry my left thumb and hold it down and align the binding to the seam allowance line on my left side now the key here is making sure that the two edges of the binding match up and form a 90 degree angle. You don't want a gap or one side to be too high or too far out. So this looks good here. So what I'm going to do next is just keep holding it down with my left thumb and I'm going to take the needle and make it run parallel to the fold here and just take about an eighth of an inch bite there and go through the fabric and then where the thread came out I'm going to do the same thing now on the right side I'm going to just put the needle through the fabric and come up just at the top of the crease there and I want to pull it not too tight and this is why having a thread color that matches the binding I think is more important because you might have a stitch or two show um, but we're going to try to keep them hidden. So now I'm going to come back at the top where the thread came out. I'm going to go back to the left side, put the needle through and again do the same thing where it came out, go to the right side the needle through keeping it really close to that fold there and I want it to come out just at the bottom sometimes I'll try and go right into the um, left side of my binding you can do that too um, or you can just come out on the right side um, whatever hides the stitches best so at this point now I'm I've made the turn and I can continue what I was doing so I'm going to start under the threads here and then just make sure that the binding stays just on top of those stitches come back in and after doing this a few times around the corner here I'll I'll pull my thread a little taut not too much because then it can pucker but um, I can see how it's looking after I've done a few stitches here so I'm going to do one more stitch Oops, jab myself. Okay. and so I'm just going to give it a little tug there and so it looks nice on this side and then I just want to flip it over and make sure it looks nice on this side so it just should be a diagonal line there so that's looking good so I'm just gonna continue now until I get to the point where I need to 
finish the binding last stitches. All right, so as you can see, I'm nearing the end. I just have a little bit left to go to close off the binding. And I might take this tail from where I first started and give it a little tug just to make sure it's not too loose on the left here. And I just wanna tuck that tail under the binding like I've been doing along the way. So I'm just gonna do a few more stitches to get to the end. Okay, so I just have that tiny little bit there. As I get closer, I just want to pay attention to when the gap is totally closed. So it might be this stitch here. So I'm just going to look under. And there's just a tiny little bit left, so I'm going to go back under. And that will close it. So now what I want to do, this is the only knot that I do during the binding. I just go underneath the backing and try not to go through the binding. And just make a little knot there. And it tucks away under. You might do one more just for good measure. So just again through the backing of the quilt. Make sure you don't go under or through the top of the quilt. And one more little knot there. And then I'll just get my scissors and cut it real close to the binding there. And the binding is complete.